I just want to greet everybody this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not saying it happened today. But I'm just asking, maybe just give me an advice. Uh, Pastor Chris has a tendency of saying ladies only. <laughs> what, what do you do if you are standing next to a man? And maybe this man is in the spirit. When they say ladies only, you find he's continuing to say hallelujah. <laughs> do you say... Uh, or, or, uh, what do you do? You just... You just forgive him. Now I'm asking this because it happened a long time ago here. And I didn't know what to say to that man. So you said I must do nothing. So it means I did the right thing. And then after church, do you go to him and say no man? They, th that part was for ladies. Oh, okay, no. All right, no, thank you very much. Uh, I really feel honored to have this opportunity to come and share with you the word of God this morning. Uh, you will remember that uh, we are always talking about being Christ-like. Our goal is that we must not be saved and remain the same, but we must develop this Christian character in such a way that when people look at us, they must see this Christ-likeness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So... We, we spoke a lot about the things that must be seen when we are Christ-like. When we are Christians, there are things that we have to, that must be visible. And then those things are elaborated very clearly. I'm not going to read the, the verse and the chapter, but I'm just going to quote. Those things are elaborated very clearly in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is... Love, joy, peace, patience, and you name them. Hallelujah. Amen. I was so blessed when Pastor John Crompton was talking about hope. He really emphasized and shared a lot about hope. And uh, I realized that it is hope that can push us forward. Hallelujah. We cannot go forward without hope. But today I want us to focus and zoom on one of the fruit of the Spirit one of the segments of the fruit of the Spirit, which is very important, and that is the segment of patience. So today we're going to talk about patience. So please be patient with me if I don't finish <laughs> preaching in time, because this is what I want and I'm praying, that at the end of this 30 minutes, everybody must understand why as Christians we have to develop patience. Hallelujah. And then I want to tell you as soon as now that patience is not going to come to you automatically. It's something that you must develop. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the title of this message today is Developing Your Patience. Underline the word you are. Not, not, not somebody's patience. Don't pray for somebody to be patient. We're talking about you. Yeah. Your patience. Yeah. How do you develop your patience? Hallelujah. Oh, let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. We want to give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for time such as this, where we can share with you, your word with power and with confidence. Father God, I thank you for everybody who's here this morning. I believe that you've got a purpose and an assignment. And Father God, I believe this is what you want us to hear today. After hearing all those messages that were so encouraging and so uplifting, Father God, I want to thank you today. You want to talk to us about patience. Speak to us. We are, we are listening. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to guide us and lead us. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Um, there are a couple of scriptures that I'm going to quote. So if you are writing, uh, it will be good for you to write them. There is this man called John Dewey. He's a psychologist. He said, the most useful virtue in the world is patience. The most useful virtue in the world is patience. That's what this psychologist said. Let me just remind you that a lot of people that are in prison today, one of the contributing factors is either they were lazy 
So they didn't want to work, so they just want to get something quickly. Number two, it's just is that they were impatient. A lot of people find themselves in difficult situations just because of being impatient. So my brothers and sisters, as I'm talking about impatience, I mean about patient, just know that when you are not patient, a lot of things can go wrong. Just by being impatient in the traffic lights and you want to move before your turn comes, you can cause a very fatal accident. A lot of things happen because somebody was impatient. Hallelujah. So I'm going to talk about the things that will test our patience. So this, 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 this is the test that you're just going to mark yourself. I'm, I'm just going to make it very clearly that there are things that will test your patience. Let me tell you, even to today, if you think of it, something might have happened that tested your patience. And then, as a Christian, the way you respond to the test of your patience is very vital. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to mention four things uh, that will test your patience. Number one is interruptions. My brothers and sisters, in life, whether you like it or not, you will encounter interruptions. Interruptions like what? You may find yourself that you are busy eating and enjoying the food, and all of a sudden the call, phone call, and it disturbs you. It interrupts what you are doing. You may find that you are busy dealing with this assignment that is due maybe at midnight or the following day. You are so much concentrating, and all of a sudden you get an unexpected visitor. That's an interruption. When they say there's somebody at the gate, you don't know whether you must tell them straight away that, you know, I've got a serious assignment. Are you here to stay or are you are just coming to say hi? Yeah. Those are the things that you're going to meet in life. And then as a Christian, the way you respond to them must be different from somebody who's not a Christian. Hallelujah. There's a lot of interruptions that I can uh, talk about, uh, but how you handle them it's really a show of how you are scoring as far as the test of patience is concerned. Hallelujah. Talking about patience, it reminds me of one guy. They said he was praying. He said, Lord, 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 give me patience and I need it right now. If you analyze that prayer, you can realize that it's already wrong. You cannot be asking for patience and you need it right now. When you are patient, it means you will wait. My brothers and sisters, whenever we talk about patience, we are also talking about waiting. Unfortunately, a lot of us are not comfortable with waiting. Okay, I'm just going to explain as we go right along. Number two, test for your patience. The first one I said is interruptions, phone ringing and unexpected visitors. Number two, the test for your patience, inconveniences. My brothers and sisters, you and I, you know it very well. We don't like delays. We want it right now, like I said. What we want is quick. We want immediate results. You go to the gym today, after two days you want to see huge change. Uh, and if you don't see huge change, you think of giving up. We want quick, quick gratification. Hallelujah. Just like in the microwave, you just put something, one, two, three, it's hot, you're eating. You don't want to wait for it to boil slowly. You want quick results. Hallelujah. I was with my friend and he said something that really touched me. He said that um, usually in the marathon, maybe Comrade Marathon, you might have seen it. If you check very well, a lot of people that are running there, are most of them 30 years going 40, 50 and above. And I asked him, why are we not having the 20s? Because in Bafana, Bafana, we need the 20s and the 15s, the, 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 the young people that are strong. And he gave me this answer and it really blessed me. He said, the youngsters, 
they cannot take, they are impatient. They want 100 meters. They want results quickly. But maturity, when you are matured, you can take that first 10 kilometers. And when the board is saying 70 kilometers to go, you can absorb it and do another 10. Do another 10. Before you realize it, you are done with the 70 or whatever kilometers. But the youngsters, they run quickly 10 kilometers, 20. The board is saying 50 kilometers to go. They say, ah, oh, no, it's too much. <laughs> then they give up. So patience is a sign of maturity. When you are matured, you will be patient. Hallelujah. So if you find yourself being very short-tempered and you are not patient, just check. It's a sign that probably something is not right and you have to mature as far as that thing is concerned. Hallelujah. God is not in hurry and God is never late. Hallelujah. God's timing is the perfect timing. Okay, the third thing uh, as we move right along about uh, things that will test your patience is irritations. The first one I said, interruptions. The second one, inconveniences. The third one, it's irritations. Little things that bug you. The most common one that everybody will know that will really irritate you is the traffic jams. When you're going to the church or to work or to a very important appointment and you find that the traffic is not moving. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It happens in the big cities usually. When you find that you are just stuck in the traffic and you realize the time of interview, you, I'm just left with, and you realize that actually I planned my things very well, but for some reason I never anticipated this traffic jam. That is something that will irritate you. Hallelujah. That's an irritation. Long lines. We don't want long lines. When you go to the supermarket or everywhere and you find that you are in this queue that is not moving, moving. It will irritate you. I don't want to talk a lot about taxi drivers. Probably one of them is here. <laughs> I don't want to be in trouble, but those people can irritate you. Something that can irritate you, and it happens to me a lot, misplaced keys. Sometimes mis misplaced cell phone. You want to go and it's very serious. You try to check the keys, but, but, but it was there. You go there. You, you can't find it, and uh, that, that, that's an irritation. Hallelujah. I think you understand it better. I don't even have to explain that. Another thing, this one is serious. When you want to quickly go to the bathroom and you find that all of them are occupied, <laughs> that's a serious irritation. I'm not going to explain to that. <laughs> the last one, unfortunately, it happened to one of our brothers, a flat tire. I'm not going to explain that. <laughs> a flat tire can really irritate you. And for those who are having a strong appetite, cold food can also irritate you. When you find that, I was enjoying this food, but because today they are cold, they are just something else. Hallelujah. So I want us to go to the book of Numbers. I skipped a lot of verses because of time. Numbers, verse 20, chapter 20, verse 10 and 11. I just want us to talk a little bit about Moses. We're not going to read it. I'm just going to quote it. I will explain what was happening. Even Moses, strong as he was, there was a time where he was impatient. I said Numbers 2010, so it's easy to remember. Numbers 2010 and 11. Moses was impatient. Because of his impatience, he struck the rock instead of just speaking to it. And what caused him to strike the rock? It was because the, 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 the complaints of the Israelites, they were criticizing and complaining. And he had, you, you can think he was right. When people are always complaining, then it affects your patience. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I want you to realize that because of that, because of that impatience, the results were not good. Because Moses didn't obey God, God did not allow him to enter the promised land. I'm just trying to show you that when you are impatient, the consequences are dire, are serious. Hallelujah. So whatever you do, just know that 
God's timing is the perfect timing. Hallelujah. The fourth one, the test for your patience, which will be the last one, it will be inactivity. Hey, I, I, this one I must tell you. I usually tell the people that when you say you are being bored or this place is boring, it's because you are doing nothing. Inactivity will really challenge your patience. Doing nothing. Have you ever find yourself in a place where when you wake up, you don't know what to do? You just have all the time that you are supposed to have in the world. That will really challenge your inactivity. Uh, some of the things that you, 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 you will understand. Have you ever find yourself in a waiting room, in the doctor's waiting room, and they just say, the doctor is coming now? You wait, you wait. They said, no, 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 it's on his way. He's coming, he's coming. That will really challenge your patience. Some people can't even wait for the elevator to come to their floor. You will realize that just when the checking is still on the third floor and they are in the tenth floor, they will, just that two or three minutes of waiting, some people's patients just move out of the window. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. I like it in the Good News translation. You know, of late I've realized that uh, as much as we like the King James Version and the NIV, but these simpler versions, they also sometimes put things in a very special way. Hallelujah. Now, Good News translation of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2 says, Impatience will get you in trouble. You realize it's so easy. Impatience will get you in trouble. Now, those are the four tests of, 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 of developing of, of your patience. Now, I want you to, to, to quickly go. I want us to quickly go to the fact to check what causes impatience. What makes somebody to be impatient when the other person is patient? I think you want to hear that. Hallelujah. Number one cause of impatience is lack of peace. I, I think that's why when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, if you think of it, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and just after peace, patience. So if you don't have number three, lack of peace, then you are likely to be impatient. Hey, when you are at peace with yourself, nothing can make you to be impatient. Just give, let me just give you an example. When you are waiting for the doctor, instead of always checking at the watch, when you are at peace, you are just singing this chorus softly without disturbing other people. You are just meditating on the word of God. You are just thinking about how good God has been to you. And you have this peace that surpasses human understanding. And when everybody is complaining that the queue is not moving, it's, not, it's, it's like you are not there. You have this peace. You don't have time to worry. Hallelujah. So impatience is caused by lack of peace. And when you have peace and when you have love, ah, let me tell you, you will have patience. Hallelujah. Let's move right along. How do you develop patience? You develop patience, number one, by developing a new perspective. Change the way you look at problems. Stop thinking of you. Usually, 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 or 90% of the times, when people are impatient, it's because they are selfish. It's because they are looking only and concentrating only at themselves. They are thinking of themselves. I'm here. I was supposed to be served first. And uh, they, they're just thinking about themselves. But when you look at life from somebody's perspective, then you can be patient with this person. I mean, sometimes when you meet this person at work and you expect them for some reason to be fast, when you talk to them, you want them to be fast, to respond fast, to answer you quickly. And for some reason that day, they seem to be answering you very slowly, you become impatient. You don't know what happened to that person in the morning. 
So before you judge them, before you become impatient with them, try to look at the situation from their point of view. Understand. Go to them and say, my brother, is everything all right? I see today it's like something is not right. And then they will be able to share with you that, no, I got this bad news and this, this. Then it will help you to navigate moving forward. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that don't judge somebody without knowing what they're going through. Hallelujah. Some of them, if they were to tell you what they're going through, you would be so, so, so surprised. Hallelujah. Proverbs 19.11. A man's wisdom gives him patience. Proverbs 19.11. A man's wisdom gives him patience. So it is to his glory to overlook an offense. When you are patient, my brothers and sisters, like I said before, it's a sign of maturity. And it shows that you can overlook an offense. It's not everything that happens to you that you must take seriously. Some of the things as a matured person, as a Christian, you must just allow it to go. Hallelujah. When you are like in the robots or traffic lights and you realize that somebody is not driving you, properly. Don't meditate on that incident the whole week. Allow it to go through. Hallelujah. I mean, here in life, we are going to meet people that will offend us. But as, a, as children of God, sometimes let's use our wisdom. Is this worth it? It's not worth it. So let it go. Hallelujah. I'm just going to move right along. Just understand one thing. When you've got this wisdom, it will help you to understand that a human being, I mean, I like the, the English word that says to err is human. A human being sometimes will err for you, to you, not because it was intentional, whether it's intentional or not, but as you are living with other people, the, the vendor saying said, but from time to time, you will just scratch each other. And uh, that's part of life. Hallelujah. And because you are scratching other people, they will scratch you. And don't only worry when they scratch you. How about the time that you were the one doing the scratching? So you must have that grace of saying, I man, you didn't answer me properly. But uh, let, me, let me be patient with them. I don't know what is going through, but let me allow it to, to pass. Hallelujah. And just uh, remind yourself that nobody is perfect. Uh, as much as somebody is a good cook, one day they will burn the food. So that does not make them to be bad. As much as the pastor is preaching good message, one day you will just feel like, I, I, today the pastor was off. Just be patient with him. He's a human being. Don't expect these hot messages every Sunday after Sunday. The other day the pastor will come here. And because he's human, he tried to pray and do everything and you just find that this message of this Sunday is not as hot as you expected, like the one he preached two, three Sundays ago. But just be patient with him. Hallelujah. And remind yourself that in every situation, whether every irritation, in anything, in every problem that, you, 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 that will be happening to you, you must ask yourself, Instead of saying, Lord, why is this happening to, to me? You must ask yourself, Lord, what do you want to teach me in this situation? Hallelujah. Yeah. Just ask yourself, what am I learning from this? There is a verse that speaks uh, directly about uh, concerning that. It's Proverbs 20, 24. I like it in the New Living Translation. The Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? The Lord directs our steps. And when the Lord is directing our steps, don't try to want to understand everything along the way. God's timing is perfect. I'm going to repeat this until the end of the message. Sometimes you want things to happen quickly. And God is not in hurry. God is just taking you one step at a time. And just if you, co if you cooperate with God, you will have peace. 
But if you are in hurry, you are going to worry and you are going to be impatient. Hallelujah. Sometimes you may find that you went to the interview and according to you, you nailed it. And you come back so confident telling everybody that if you don't see me next week, the chances are that I will be starting a new job. And it so happens that they don't call you. They call somebody who you, you never thought is a match to you. But you must ask yourself, God, what are you teaching me? I know I'm more qualified than him, than him or than her. But for some reason, they didn't call me. They called her. Lord, in these situations, I know you are directing my step. I know you've got something better for me. If you can understand every day, day that the steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. You are a good man. God is ordering your steps. Hallelujah. He will take you one step at a time. Sometimes you may feel like the pace is slow, but let me tell you, it does not matter. As long as the Lord is the one who is directing your steps, it is fine. Hallelujah. All through the Bible, the word patience and maturity go hand in hand, as I said. Uh, you, you might have realized also, even with our children, to see that the, your, your child is growing is because they will start to be a bit patient than before. Before they want, if you give them money, they want to spend it now. If they see a sweet, they want it now, 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 now. They don't have that thing of saying, okay, no, I can eat one, the other one I will eat tomorrow. They don't think about tomorrow. They want it now, hallelujah. Proverbs 14.29, NIV. Proverbs 14.29 from the New International Version. It says, whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. If you are patient, you've got great understanding. So like I said, the children don't know the difference between no and not yet. If you buy a cake and you said, I will give it to you, but not now, I will give you later. They will keep on asking you, is it not time, daddy? You said, no, 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 I, I, I will give you. The, they said, okay, we thought you were forgotten. Hardly 10, 15 minutes, they say, are, are we right? They don't understand that you are not actually saying no. You are saying no. Not yet. I will give you, but not now. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing I said, the, 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 the first thing to develop your patient is to develop new perspective. Now, I want us to talk about this verse that is one of the most delicious verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. It says, love is patient. Love is patient. When you are impatient, just know this. When you are impatient, you are, be, you are being unloving. Love is not easily provoked. Anger is. Ephesians 4 verse 2 says, be patient with each other. So you are patient with these people, with each other, because you love them. Remember, the greatest commandment is love. Love. Hallelujah. Now, when you love somebody, you are patient with them. You can realize that they are taking their time, but because you love them, you know that they, they, they will finally do the right thing. Hallelujah. But when you are impatient, it shows that you are not uh, 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 loving. The last one for, that will help you to, 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 to develop your patience in everything depend on the Lord. Hallelujah. Patience is not something that you can just psych yourself up. It is the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. When you depend on the Lord, when you say, Lord, I don't understand what is happening. I don't understand how it is happening, but I'm depending on you. 
it develops your patience. Hallelujah. I'm just going to skip some of the verses, but the, 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 patience is a form of faith. When you are patient, it shows that you've got faith. When people are saying that, oh, if it was me, I would have already chased this child away. You said, no, I'm patient with this child. It means you've got faith in God, that God is the one that will change this child. You, you, you've got faith in God, but when you are quick-tempered and you want to fix things your own way, it shows that you don't trust God. Hallelujah. So you can show your patience by how much you trust in God. Hallelujah. It may take time, but you trust in God. Those that wait upon the Lord, that's Isaiah 40 verse 31, he will renew their strength. They will fly up with wings like eagles. Hallelujah. When you wait upon the Lord, my brothers and sisters, he will renew your strength. Things that were supposed to make you to feel tired, to feel exhausted, God will renew your strength. Just wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. I said patient and waiting, they, are, they go hand in hand. Hallelujah. Let me just give you these st statistics. Noah waited 120 years before the promised rain came down. I mean, that's, a, that, that, that's, that's waiting. 120 years. You, you are just waiting three, four months and you want to give up for whatever God has promised you. Noah waited 120 years. So that's a bit of waiting. Hallelujah. Abraham was 100 years old when he had the promised son. Hallelujah. You just go to one doctor and then you give up. 100 years old for, for Abraham. Moses waited 40 years in the desert and another 40 years leading the children of Israel according, across the desert to the promised land. The disciples of Jesus, they waited for the Holy Spirit in the upper room. You remember the story, hallelujah. So there is always going to be some waiting to do, my brothers and sisters. So let's teach ourselves to wait, hallelujah. Things will not always happen the way you wa we want us them to happen. As a matter of fact, the Bible is the book about waiting. Hallelujah. God is never in a hurry. God is never late. Now, in conclusion, I want us to read this verse. Galatians chapter 6. Uh, Galatians chapter 6. We're going to read it from verse 9. Ah, this is the verse that really blesses me. Are you there in Galatians? Yes. Hey, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. I'm reading it from the New King James Version. It says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let us not grow weary. Other version says, let us not grow tired. My brothers and sisters, in life, while we are waiting, there will be things that will make us to be tired. There will be things that will make us to feel like it's taking forever. But the word of God, I like what he's saying. It says, let us not grow weary because in due time, in the right time, in the proper time, like I said, God is the one that is directing our steps. My brothers and sisters, there is what we call the right time. And God's timing is the right timing. And when it is the right time, I'm telling you, you won't have to force things. You won't have to manipulate people to get that position. It will just be the right time. Let us not grow weary in doing good. Whatever you are doing, and for, for, for some reason you don't seem to be seeing the results, let me tell you, it's just a matter of time before God promotes you. 
And when God promotes you, even your enemies, even those who were totally against you, they will know about it. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, there is a promotion waiting for you. Just be faithful. Just continue to do good. In the morning, in the afternoon, just continue to do good. The results are on the way. Hallelujah. I'm saying this because there are people who start very well. But along the way, they say, ah, I've been doing this thing. I've been in this church for this many years. They are not uh, recognizing me. What's the point? Let me tell you, one day is one day. When it's God's timing, nobody can stop it. You know the song, when God says yes, nobody can say no. Hallelujah. Don't get tired of doing good and don't give up. Don't give up. Whatever happens, don't give up. The last verse, uh, I'm not, not going to read it. I'm just going to quote it from the Good News translation. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. If you forget everything that I said, don't forget this. It says, in the right time, God will make everything happen quickly. What you've been struggling to do in many years, God can just do it in the nick of time. Hallelujah. I, I, I think if there are business people here, they will realize that sometimes you find that you've made profit in one week more than what you did in three, four weeks. God has a way of working. That is not necessarily logical to us. I, I mean, I'm talking about myself now. When I started being self-employed, Everywhere I go, they used to tell me, ah, Wednesday is a bad day. Ah, Wednesday, there's no business. You go to town, you ask them, they will tell you, ah, Wednesday. If you want to go visit or what, go on Wednesday. Because Wednesday, there's no business. And I'm telling you, I, I, just, I just like God, man. God has a way of doing his things. There are days where Wednesday was, for me, the busiest day of the week. So God has his own formula that we may not necessarily understand. Hallelujah. So what you've been struggling to do, God can do it and make it happen quickly. Hallelujah. So don't give up. Just be patient. Only God knows. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. And Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time. We just want to give you praise and honor and glory. Father God, we know that as your children, you want us to develop, develop the fruit of patience. Help us, mighty God, in every situation to be patient, to know that your timing is the perfect timing, to know that whether we meet irritations, inconveniences, we must know that God is in control and God is the one who is directing our steps. It may not be happening the way we expected it. Help us, Father God, to know that you are not in a hurry and you are never late. We want to thank you, mighty God. There are people here that you know that will about to give up that we're about to throw the towel. But Father God, through this message, I believe that you're going to continue to minister to them, for them to lean on the everlasting arms of you and know that when the time is right, you're going to bless them beyond measure. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen.